What we're going to make today is the traditional Italian uh, pasta sauce called Diavolo sauce. Diavolo in Italian means devil, and the reason they call it that is because it's a little bit spicy and um, it's got a little bit of heat to it. So let's go over some of the ingredients we've got here. Let's start, we've got a little bit of chopped garlic. You can either buy it pre-chopped, chop your own, or even uh, chop it up in a food processor. Just don't do, uh, puree it too much. We've got some shallots here, chopped shallots. Uh, shallot is a small onion. It's a little more flavorful and a little bit stronger. We've got some red chili flakes or crushed red pepper. And this is where the Diavolo sauce is going to get the spice from. Over here we've got some slow roasted tomato puree. And what it is is we take these slow roasted tomatoes that you can buy at your local grocery store or specialty store. It's a Roma tomato that's been dehydrated, um, slow roasted, and then marinated. Right here we've got some Pomodoro sauce, which is a very light, neutral tomato sauce. You can use any kind of light tomato sauce you have that doesn't have too many herbs or spice flavors to it. We've got here some anisette liqueur. Um, that's what's right in here, this bowl here. You can use any kind of licorice or anise flavor liqueur for this. Um, Perno works great, as well as you can even use Sambuca. Right here we've got some chicken stock. We make all of our chicken stock in-house. And uh, you can go ahead and buy it in the box though and use it from the store, that'll work fine. If you do want to make your Diablo sauce vegetarian, you can just use, substitute water for the chicken stock. Um, the only uh, thing you'll lose with that is you'll have a little less flavor and a little less body, but it'll still be a delicious sauce. So let's get started and uh, start our Diablo sauce. We've got a large pot in here. You want to make sure it's a big enough pot where it's going to fit all your ingredients. We'll let it heat a little bit. We're going to add a little bit of our canola or vegetable oil. You're going to let that pot heat up just a touch more. I always prefer a wooden spoon when uh, stirring up this sauce. When you're using a wooden spoon, it's not going to scrape the bottom of the pot. It's, uh, it's not going to give off any uh, discoloration like you get from some of the metal spoons. So now that we've got this pot nice and warm, first thing we're going to add is our chopped garlic and our chopped shallots. You go ahead and want to cook this kind of on medium-high heat as you cook your shallots and garlic. The real important thing in this, during this portion, is you want to be able to caramelize and cook your garlic and shallots without burning the garlic. Once you let that garlic go uh, dark brown or black, it's going to give off a really bitter flavor that's not appetizing at all. And that'll permeate throughout your sauce. You'll notice as it starts to heat up, the garlic starts to stick a little bit. That's the uh, sugars within the garlic starting to caramelize a little bit. That's just what we want. The next thing we're going to add is we're going to go ahead and add our chili flakes here in a couple seconds. Now the important thing with the chili flakes is really a lot of the spice and the heat comes off as they heat up and release a lot of their essential oils. Um, when they do do that though, they might smoke a little bit and it's going to pour off a really kind of a, a toxic uh, smoke that if you get in your face or eyes it's really going to kind of burn. So make sure you lean back a little bit. Make sure your pot's still nice and hot. We're going to go ahead and dump in our chili flakes. And we don't want to cook them for too long in there. We don't want these to go black either. But we do want to heat them enough on their own with the shallots and garlic so they can start to really release those oils. They're really nice right there. they got a nice color. We're going to remove this a little bit away from the heat because we're going to be adding some alcohol. This is an anisette liqueur. It's really high in alcohol volume. You don't want to, if you're using a gas burner especially, you don't want to do it over the heater. It'll flame up on you. So go ahead and pour that in. Return it to the heat. 
We're going to reduce the, the flame a little bit on it. Or if you use an electric stove, reduce your heat. We're going to go ahead and what we've done is deglaze, which we, means we've pulled off a lot of the, uh, the sugars and the garlic and the shallots that have stuck to the bottom of the pot. This really brings all the flavor out and any of those little bits that have been stuck to the bottom kind of caramelizing and roasting in there. We want to cook it until it's reduced by about half. What that's going to do is anytime you reduce an alcohol or liquor by half, that's going to cook out all the alcohol. So we still get all the wonderful licorice or anise flavor, but you don't have that sharp alcohol bite to it. Because this is a swipe, slightly sweet liquor, you're going to notice that it'll start to uh, it'll start to get a little bit thicker and a little bit stickier. And that's just the nature of the liqueur you're adding. And we've got a nice reduction amount on there. What we're going to do next is we're going to take our to roasted tomato puree. We're going to go ahead and dump that right in there. Take our Pomodoro sauce, go ahead and pour it right in there. We're going to stir this all together and get it nice and married. So everything's incorporated there together. And then this is still a really thick sauce. So what we're going to want to do is, for this amount, we'll probably use about a quarter and a half, maybe two quarts of chicken stock or water if you're doing a vegetarian. And we're going to use that to kind of loosen the sauce up. We've pretty much got everything really well incorporated, really, really well combined. You're going to take a little bit of your chicken stock. I'll pour in about half of what I got here, and then check the consistency. Obviously, there's a couple modifications you can do to this as you get used to making this sauce. If you like it a little spicier, you add a little bit more crushed red pepper. If you like it a little less spicier, you add a little bit less. Also, if you like a little bit thicker sauce, you can just leave it in this state right here. But if you want a little bit thinner, thinner and runnier sauce, then you'll probably want to um, use a little bit more chicken stock. little bit more chicken stock so we have it nice. We like to have it here at Faustina just thick enough so it can stick to the noodles and kind of grip onto them but also a little bit so it can run off the noodles and you can have a little bit of sauce in the bottom of your plate to mop up with a little bit of bread or scoop up with a spoon. So we've got it nice down to a nice nice consistency here. Still a little bit loose now what we're going to do is we're going to turn the heat down so that we can achieve a nice little simmer. Now you want to simmer this for about 15 to 20 minutes to let all of the, the flavors kind of come together and really combine so it's just one fluid flavor throughout. So let's let this come to a simmer and then we'll get back with you. Okay, we've let it simmer now for about 15-20 minutes. The consistency looks great on it. What we're going to do now is we're going to taste it to see if it needs any more salt and pepper. Mm. A little bit salt. We use kosher salt here, but table salt is fine. Just use a little bit less if you're using table salt. Touch of pepper. It's got a nice little bite of spiciness and heat to it. Now what you're going to want to do with this sauce is you can either cook pasta and either dump it over the pasta or toss the pasta in it. Obviously a smaller amount than this. And, uh, or you can go ahead and refrigerate it. And you can store it for usually up to a week if you keep it uh, properly refrigerated. That means under 40 degrees. Give it one more taste. Excellent. So this is the Diablo sauce from Faustina Restaurant. It's a little bit spicy tomato sauce. Delicious with any house-made pasta you might put together or dry pasta as well. Enjoy!